What's up, everybody? I'm Evil Rabbit, and we're here on a set of Corsa Bushido series. Round three qualifying is going to be getting underway here very shortly. So we're going to be running some practice in the vet, some final practices before we head into the driver's meeting and stuff like that. I'm going to guys give you a little a look into the driver's meeting, which I will record the driver's meeting and stuff like that, as well as uh, my runs from different angles and stuff like that so you guys can see my qualifying runs and then we will digest the runs and talk about them and well tell you guys how the rounds gonna go if we qualify in if we don't what we learned what we didn't so round three Bushida series qualifying and stuff is today so we are going to uh, run some practice before we actually hit into the drivers meeting and everything like that and uh, well let's hopefully we can get some solid runs in on practice before we actually go into our qualifying runs. I do have a fairly, fairly comfortable tune dialed in, and I did turn off all my uh, tire wear and stuff like that because there is, uh, well, I did turn off my tire blankets and everything because the Bushido series does not allow tire blankets, so we have to worry about heating up our tires and stuff like that, but we're going to run it without heating up and see how this works. So if you guys remember my runs when I was testing for this round, I was having some trouble sticking in line, but after getting a uh, you know, I don't know that qualifying. after getting a tune pretty comfortable in, I'm pretty comfortable in the car and super excited to get into qualifying. And realized about downshifting the second gear is gonna help me tremendously in that section. So that's not a bad run at all. So a little bit shaky, but I'm, you know, was just kind of uh, throwing it out there real quick. Now that our tires a little bit warmed up, which I think is what we're gonna have to do, is warm up our tires a little bit before our run. Uh, that's gonna be just a determination of how they have their track temperatures and everything. But I will be able to test that before my qualifying run when the session actually opens. There we go. That's good. Carrying the line. Cut that a little bit shorter than I wanted to, but deep on that zone. So like I said, definitely getting very comfortable in the car and the way it feels, I feel like I will be able to uh, throw down at least two qualifying runs. If you guys remember round one, uh, I did double zero both my qualifying runs at Suscuba by accidentally uh, going two tires off course on the first run and then looping it on the final section in my second run. Oh, why did I go in second? That's not what I want to do. Do not do that in qualifying. So I have gotten more comfortable on throttle control. That run was way off, you know, way off clips more smooth on throttle control because I'm going to definitely need to stay kind of consistently on throttle and not be stabby. Um, I know the judges are listening to the cars and stuff like that, so I don't want to be stabby in my throttling because being stabby will probably subtract points for me in the long run. So I kind of got to stay maybe a little bit linear on the throttle. There we go. Popped on the second. Oh, oh, a little wall tap, but unfortunately that was uh, the curse of that one. So let's take a look at um, that run from the outside before we hit the wall because I feel like that was a decent run until we uh, kind of bopped into the wall. So let's take a look at that. And then uh, we're going to pretty much just hop into the driver's meeting, give you guys a chance to uh, take a listen in a driver's meeting for the Bushido Series series so that you guys see, you know, what we're told. It, they'll explain the driving line and stuff like that. You know, so for those who are not competing, it'll be kind of a look into what they're looking for when it comes to runs and stuff like that. So that was pretty, uh, pretty flowy entry and a pretty flowy run there in the beginning. That was pretty good as well, so a little bit outside on that line, but 
And then here's where it kind of went wrong, right there. It kind of ran that one wide too wide. So we're going to hop into the driver's meeting. I believe the driver's meeting is going to start here very soon. Give you guys a chance to listen to the driver's meeting and see what they're looking for. We'll take a look at the course map and everything as well. So let's just go hop into it. Great. How's everyone doing? Good. So sorry about the delay, appreciate everyone being patient. And of course we have um, almost got all the lists ready. If you guys haven't taken a look at the line map, please do open it up or review it here with us as well. I hope everyone has read the rule book just so you're aware. For today, I will be judging angle. We have Tyler Nelson. Uh, doing line, and we've got five doing style. We've got quite a bit of people. We've got screenshots taken, and we'll have the quality sheet ready here in just a moment with all the groups. So I will go through what I'm looking for in angle, and then we'll go with Tyler talking about what he would like to see online, and we'll finish with five seeing what he likes to see with. Uh, style. In terms of angle, of course, I want you guys to get some big angle on the entry. You guys know me. I like big angle. And of course, with that immediate slowdown, you're going to need the angle to slow down. Get that big angle through clip two and a clip three start to, uh, you know, lose that angle a little bit. So you're not having to uh, slam on the brakes or something to get your car to rotate back. And then you're going to flick into getting ready for clip four with some big angle there, but you've got a big turn coming up. So make sure you don't flick too hard so you can carry that through to clip five, fill that outside zone, and then start wrapping it in to clip three. And you're going to have to slow down there a little bit. I would like to see it done with some angle, you guys. So big angle on clip six. And uh, of course, flip it back around for clip seven and then finish it out with a strong big angle. Coming in at eight and through the finish line. So not looking for a huge angle on the finish line, obviously, but try to get close to that wall. And uh, yeah, mainly just uh, on the transitions, I wanna see, you know, big angle snappy transitions, but apply the angle where it's needed. If you're trying to reach a next clip, you know, don't, don't slam on the left foot brake there. And with that on to Tyler. How's it going? All right, so this is a pretty flowy track. Line is kind of, it's there. I'm sure you guys have been practicing. So you know if you're offline, you're either going to hit a wall or you're just going to miss the zone. Uh, one thing I will say is just because you make a zone doesn't mean you're going to get full points. You need to be able to connect zone to zone because you can almost ride the wall or the white line from zone to zone. Um, so yeah, clip one to clip two, you can almost be on the white line when you enter. Uh, going into clip three to clip four, you want a nice smooth uh, transition. You don't want to get into clip four too soon because then you're going to have to angle out and then get back on power. I want to see a nice flowy, you can almost keep the same angle from uh, clip four all the way to clip three, uh, or sorry, clip six. And after clip six, you can uh, three, you can be a little snappier with your transition or, or whatever you're comfortable with, but uh, right back out to the zone. And I want to finish out strong on the wall. You don't want to lose power just because you get in the zone and you kind of angle out and lose power. People are going to get bunched up behind you. So you want to just uh, kind of start to pull the angle out a little bit so you can keep speed through the finish and uh, not really park it. But other than that, yeah, it's a real flowy track. It's a lot of outside zones. And uh, basically, if your tires are in the zone, I'm going to count it because I'm sure the cars are a little different. You don't have to have, um, you know, your tires all the way back on the white line. But I'm not going to give 10s unless you're, uh, you know, all the way on the white line from zone to zone. If you're chopping it and just, throwing it in the zones, uh, you're not going to get full. So yeah, that's it. Any questions? 
We'll hold the questions here until after five. Go ahead with what you'd like to see for style. Hello, I am Ficarious. I will be judging style today, as Sarun has previously me mentioned. Uh, style's pretty self-explanatory. You know, um, I'm going to be looking specifically for aggressive flicks, how close you're getting to the wall, how much angle you've got, how close you are to the lead vehicle itself. Um, that's pretty, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's, it's so, I do wish you all the best of luck though, and we're going to get things. Cool. So with that, the floor is open for questions, guys. Please let us know if you want to type it in the chat room. Uh, we'll... Next will be Rasmus. Andrew, when you're ready, please. A lot of Chevy Corvettes in this group, that's for sure. <laughs> We're going to be hearing a lot of American V8. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Nothing at all. Great entry by Andrew. Just barely dropping that tire as he comes into clip three. Let's see how he does against clip four here. Not bad trying to fill it out right in here the end there. Ooh. He got it together. Didn't quite go off track. And there he goes. So Andrew Kazora's first run, not too shabby. <laughs> Next will be Erasmus. Andrew, when you're ready, please. Good job because we have Andrew Kazora coming in for his second run here. Sitting on a 70. Looking good through the course here, that first sector. Getting all the way out there. Does drop the tire just for a second. Ooh. Oh, almost looks like he shifted into the wrong gear, but stay on it even with the wall tap. <laughs> Andrew Kazora going for broke on his second run. All right, so with my qualifying runs done in the books, I did get a 70 on my first run and a 75 on the second run with that pretty uh, pretty intense wall hit. And I was lucky that I was able to keep control of the car with that wall hit. So with my scores being 70 and 71, they held out pretty well for staying in the top 32 for most of the drivers runs until the last 32 drivers uh, qualified 
the last 32 were the ones that actually qualified in to round two, so they're definitely uh, higher up there drivers and skill set. So my run, my 75 was my best run, and that was kind of my cutoff score. And that set and stayed for a very good time until, like I said, those last 32. So unfortunately, I did not qualify for round uh, round three of Bushido Series here at Rockingham, but I learned a lot. I learned, you know, you know, getting the car set up, getting more comfortable in this car, and I was able to complete two runs. Uh, did a lot better than round one, um, and I was super excited that, you know, I was able to complete two full runs, getting rid of some of those competition jitters that, you know, a lot of people get, the nerves and everything that happen, you know, even though it's something you do all the time, you still get nervous when there's people watching you and stuff like that. So, with my runs, I was happy with how I did it. Uh, could I have gotten better runs? That second run looked like it was very promising, but that wall hit was definitely uh, definitely a big deal. But, you know, it got the judges talking, and they were uh, kind of excited about it, and I stayed in, and I was able to complete the run. So, and I got a better run than my first one. So, with not qualifying for round three, I was not super sad because I was able to accomplish something that I didn't do in round one, which was actually nail two qualifying runs. So, moving on to round four, definitely getting more comfortable in this car, definitely more solid in my driving when it comes to driving this Corvette, and I will probably be staying in the Corvette. I'm not going to change cars or anything like that because I found sometimes it's better just to stay in the same car that we're you know, that I was running instead of switching it up all the time and changing it around and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little look at round three. And, uh, you know, make sure you guys follow me on Instagram and Twitter, all of you found in the description box below. Little look into the driver's meeting from the judges, what they were expecting to see, and my runs from the judges' perspective and my own. So looking forward to the next round. Looking forward to having more fun. I believe the next round is probably going to be in two weeks. So, as always, I thank you guys for watching. I'm Evil Rabbit. I'll see you guys on the track.